Well, 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 Robert, I'm very, very happy and very excited to greet you for another Underdog! Let's do it. Very yep. good, Arna. I'm happy to be back here as well. We are having the World Cup. We had the World Cup, let's be precise about this. And there were plenty of games. It must have been quite a tough uh, decision to find an underdog win. Could you find I one? Actually, uh, there were quite a number of interesting uh, options, uh, especially in the first round. The, there are some uh, rating differences, which is uh, very interesting. But uh, I've decided to pick one game from the third round, <laughs> um, a game uh, with uh, Anish Giri uh, <gasps> playing. And uh, I mean, it's always when you have one of the top players in the world and you're, you're paired as a uh, uh, normal grandmaster with, with one of these top guys, you're, you're always the underdog, right? So Absolutely. Um, uh, I think that's always uh, always interesting, even though the, the rating gap is not as huge as it has been in uh, in previous um, uh, shows of, of the show. Uh, it's a game of uh, Nijat Abbasov, who mm. was actually in the end the hero of the uh, World Cup, uh, local player from Azerbaijan, very strong player, 26-32, uh, Anish Giri 27-75. So it's about 150 points uh, rating differences, but um, he must have entered the match with a feeling that he is the underdog. And, 100%. Uh, uh, but what's interesting about this World Cup format, it's a, it's a knockout event, of course. And um, um, when you're the underdog, uh, you have this option to uh, drag the games into the, into the tiebreak. And uh, it depends, of course, on your, on your skills, your playing strength. Uh, but definitely it may help the... Uh, the weaker player to take it to a shorter time control. So playing uh, two solid games, uh, even uh, giving up your your wide extra wide game, it can really help uh, just to force a tie break, mm -hmm. go to the rapid, go to the blitz, and eventually an Armageddon may just uh, help you to uh, defeat the um, the favorite in in such format. Yeah, sometimes it comes closer closer to a penalty shootout like that. It's yeah. a penalty shootout like in football, indeed. So um, that is a strategy which you see some of the players have been uh, using it. Although there are also a lot of other players who don't want to put all the all their um, money on on the on the on the penalty shootout to put it like <laughs> that. Um, but interestingly, okay, I, I want to show you the um, the tiebreak game of uh, of these two guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was 1-1, uh, classical portion, then uh, rapid format. And in the first game, uh, Anish Giri managed to win with the white pieces. And then uh, Abbasov uh, had to, to bounce back with the white pieces to, uh, to force uh, a win. And I will show you how he, uh, how he did it. All I right. think it's, it's very interesting. So um, let's have a look together. And uh, Abbasov opens with, uh, with 1-D4. This is all what he uh, played earlier. Uh, in the match also with uh, with Giri, uh, knight f3, d5, knight c3. So it's a classical queen's uh, gambit uh, declined. And interestingly, okay, I think specifically for this match, uh, Anish decided to play very solid with black. It was his strategy to play solid with black and push with white. Uh, now he is in the lead and Abbasov has to win. Uh, such a solid uh, position can be... Um, can be can be recommended of course but uh, let's see what abasov has uh, has in mind h6 bishop h4 very uh, standard way of uh, playing now castling kingside it's uh, it's uh, it's a good move but uh, agiri goes for d take c4 i think it's an interesting move it's uh, it's not the most common continuation usually uh, black is going to wait a bit until uh, white plays first moves like e3 bishop e2 wasting a move with the bishop before recapturing the pawn. Now, uh, this is modern chess. The engines are saying that this is the best line for, for black to uh, to uh, obtain full equality. So uh, e3, c5, bishop uh, takes c4, and uh, white basically saves the tempo now by uh, taking back with uh, the bishop. c takes d4, e takes d4, and we have a position with an isolated uh, queen's pawn. I think that's always a good idea if you're playing for a win. Try to uh, to get an imbalance in the position. So the pawn, it's always the question: is uh, is it a weakness or or an asset? But definitely, with pieces on the board, there are also uh, attacking chances because of the uh, extra space 
generated by that uh, pawn. If I remember but, correctly, and maybe I, I, I really don't remember it 100%, but I think in one of our uh, earlier episodes, we also had a very similar position where there was also an isolated uh, queen's pawn. You at home might know it. You can also check it. I, I, if you haven't done so, I would really, really uh, advise you to check out the earlier episodes of the underdogs. There is a rating gap of almost a thousand points, for example, <laughs> and some really, really interesting and insightful ideas of how to also play against a much stronger opponent. No. All right, let's continue. And, and, and even at uh, the highest level, I mean, it's 150 points yeah. difference. It's maybe not as much, but... It's still uh, the gap quite, is bigger in this easy. high level, right? I mean, if a two thousand five hundred plays against a two thousand seven hundred, then that is already like uh, fifteen hundred against two thousand, almost something like that, right? I, exactly. The, the difference feels uh, quite huge. Although, on the other hand, you can also turn it around. It, uh, it's it's not that simple for uh, <laughs> for somebody like Anish Giri to beat uh, a very experienced grandmaster. Yeah. So um, it's just how you how you look at it. Absolutely, absolutely, that's correct. Let's let's see what happened. Castles, castles, knight c6, rook e1, and uh, here one of the ideas of black is to initiate the exchange of uh, uh -huh. uh, exchanges with um, with the dark squared bishops with knight h5, bishop takes, and you you got to be precise. Don't take back with the queen as it does allow d5, and the pawn on e6 <laughs> is uh, is pinned. This is looking uh, really bad for, for black already. So much better is knight takes e7. And up to this point, uh, players were following uh, the first game of uh, of the match. I mean, the first uh, game Abasov uh, was playing with white in the, in the classical uh, time control. In that game, he was still following that very solid approach. And he went for the move d5. Mm -hmm. Uh, which basically is an, a silent uh, draw offer because uh, <laughs> pieces are going to be uh, swapped immediately. Um, now the symmetry has been uh, restored. It's an open game. Uh, Black gets his bishop out, and um, well, it's 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 very even. If you take the pawn on b7, there's rook b8, and Black Black will regain the pawn on on b2. Mm -hmm. Um, instead, they're followed queen d4, but pieces are going to be swapped. And after bishop d5, okay, the game lasted uh, about 20 more moves or so. But it's uh, it's quite an uneventful uh, game. But it, this this is how you can also approach your um, your matches. Mm -hmm. Now, in a must win situation, uh, of course, uh, Abasov deviates from uh, from that game and uh, plays more ambitious move knight e5. Mm -hmm. Placing the knight on a nice uh, square, opening the path for the for the queen hitting the knight, so the knight goes back to its uh, stable square on f6. And here, interesting moment because I'm pretty sure that um, one of the seconds, one of the helpers of Abasov has spent some time trying to come up with some uh, new ideas in this line. As you can try to play it very solidly with moves like like rook c1, but it's not much. And having exchanged uh, the bishop definitely redu reduces the the pressure. On, mm -hmm. uh, on this diagonal, black has a firm grip on the blockading square, so it will be not simple. But look what Abasov is going to do now, because things are getting really exciting uh, now. A4, maybe uh, not the, the kind of move you would have expected here, but uh, it could be kind of uh, useful not. to uh, to advance the pawn, to grab space. Yeah, if ever B6 uh, happens too, or something, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And... There's an alternative plan that in certain cases you can uh, uh, consider uh -huh. a rook lift with uh, rook a, uh, a3 coming That's over cute. to the king side. That's one idea. Black played the move a6. Not really sure that was needed, but uh, in, in certain cases it makes sense to uh, to cover the b5 squares, so otherwise the knight may uh, may come in. Mm -hmm. um, so this, uh, this is still quite interesting. And now the, the big shock, h4. <laughs> I mean, you, you have all these kind of ideas with H4s nowadays in almost any game. You see the H pawn coming up, but this was not a position I was expecting the H pawn to come because normally the plan is to uh, bring it up to H6 to uh, provoke some uh, weaknesses on the dark squares. But Black has already a pawn on H6. Mm -hmm. So, what can be the idea? Well, let's see. Bishop d7 played. It is quite funny that it's first A4 and then H4. It's like, Anish must it, have thought, like, 
Are you trolling me or what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think maybe it's not the first move of the engine, and that could also be a strategy to, to uh -huh. get a very well prepared player like Anish out of book by mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, the second or third option. But this is a moment, Arne, where you and okay. the viewers uh, can have a guess what to uh, what to play here with White. Uh, it looks so tempting. The whole time I'm looking at F7, of course, because it's... Uh, in bullet or blitz games, I would just love to just snack this pawn away and just <laughs> go for the throat somehow. I mean, what what will happen? So we would take, but then if the knight, uh, the rook takes back, I I don't see anything there. It's, it's it's usually a typical idea when you can capture on e6 next, yeah. but now the bishop is still defending e6 as well. So these kind of sacrifices, they are a little bit. Too much, I uh, I would say. Okay, so then let's go to my second idea I had in mind, which is the even more <laughs> trolling G4. How yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Excellent. G4. How, how how can you explain this to to <laughs> to your you, children? To, to your children, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To your students, your children. Um, it's only recommended here because Black has already uh, played the move H6. So this is a hook. And uh, mm -hmm. White is about to go G5 and try to open up the, um, the king side. I mean, when you see it, you, you love it, but I'm not sure I would have played <laughs> it myself. Uh, even if I had seen the idea, I'm not sure I would have gone for it. Let's let's see. So what should Black do? It's uh, difficult to say what, what is exactly the best. You, you can try to get a rook into the game. You can try to go away with your knight to anticipate that move, but... Um, in the game, they followed knight c6. I think that's quite a, a reasonable move to put more pressure on the knight to initiate more exchanges. But anyway, white continues with uh, with g5. White just yeah. doesn't care, yeah. White uh, white doesn't care in uh, indeed, and it just continues. And here, you feel the pressure. Like, what should you do? And um, uh, especially with a shorter time control, it's not easy to work out all the details of such position. And mm -hmm. therefore, I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, Ab Abasov's um, very uh, aggressive play. He's not afraid to uh, to challenge uh, Anish. And Anish played by far the most natural move, h takes g5. Okay. h takes g5. And before moving the knight away, he took on e5 with uh, with a knight to get rid of that uh, that piece. And the question is how to uh, recapture because g takes f6 not possible because of um, knight takes c4. If you take with the uh, pawn, there will be knight h7, and now the pawn on g5 is uh, is a clear weakness. Yeah, and, and f4 is probably over the top now. <laughs> exactly be be because black is going to play uh, bishop c6 and uh, aim for exchanges. Yeah, and uh, objectively speaking, the position is fine for black, but also considering the match situation things are looking uh, quite good for for black so abasov i'm thinking he is still pretty much in his uh, theory here decided to take back with the rook and now the knight doesn't have that many great squares to go to goes back to h7 mm -hmm. so you're attacking the pawn on uh, g5 together with the queen oh but this there is... is queen h5 yeah okay queen h5 protecting the pawn and um, all of a sudden, you are realizing that Black's king is also quite vulnerable. I mean, white pushes his own pawns in yeah. front of its king. But um, if you give white uh, just a few moves, it's very easy to imagine a, a mating attack along the H file with um, the rook coming over after playing king g2. Uh, it's very difficult for black to defend uh, that h7 uh, square now. And attempts to to do so if you if you play move like f6 to to kick the the rook for instance there follows g6 yeah with a mating threat you cannot go to g5 because you eliminate a defender and that's game over it's gonna be checkmate that's an interesting line alternative could be to play g6 but then also queen h6 the queen is nicely placed here and um, yeah I mean White will continue with the aforementioned uh, plan of uh, getting mm -hmm. the rook over. Uh, to the h file even the other rook in certain cases may come back to via e3 to h3 but don't forget that the rook is now needed also um, oh yeah to, to to keep the pawn defended on uh, on g5 mm -hmm. so i think black is already in in big trouble but what did black do wrong 
Um, well, I can say now with the help of the monster, the machine, uh, Black should not have opened the uh, the H file. It's better to uh, to take immediately uh -huh. uh, on on E5, and after Rook takes, you you go back with your knight to H7. So the the H pawns are are still on the board, and the difference is shown if White is going to take on uh, on H6. Then it's Queen takes H4, and the Queen comes over to help out in uh, in defense and. Uh, uh -huh. The, the question is who's attacking whom here i mean why is also uh, in in deep trouble but yeah i mean it's um it's very difficult to calculate this from afar and uh in the game let's see what happened rook c8 was played um attacking the uh, the bishop on c4 uh -huh. and now the question is where do you go with the bishop and um ideally you would keep the bishop on this diagonal so that, let's say, after a move like bishop a2, it will always be difficult for black to get in f6, as then the pawn on e6 uh, remains under threat. Mm -hmm. But the move played by Abbasov is bishop d3. It's, it's a much more concrete idea. You're just threatening a checkmate in one. That's a nice threat. It's a nice threat, but it makes uh, black's task even uh, easier, because black can oh. play oh wow it works because the knight can after g6 the knight can go to f6 and then white cannot do anything how or annoying even, or even i oh. think it's like queen g5 which is which is also interesting it's really a check and you you force the it's exchange the of queens. that is that is working very well yeah yeah, yeah so white took on f6 captured on passant renewing mm -hmm. the threat black recaptures with a knight but now the pawn on e6, okay, it's a weakness, but it's no longer attacked by this bishop on uh, on the um, yeah. ga diagonal. White's queen is under threat, so the queen moved to h4. And look, king f7. The king, <laughs> the king comes over to help out. It's it's pretty solid here. There are no checks. And after rook a e1, very logical move, black plays here rook h8, attacking the queen. Uh -huh. And... Um, yeah, you can also feel now that White doesn't have an uh, immediate threat. Got to move the, the queen somewhere. What a game! Yeah, it's it. Well, we, we are just starting, Arna. So uh, <laughs> let, let's let's see what's going to happen in the next few moves. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, well, the queen went to g5. Very tempting move to to keep the option open of giving a check. Sure. Rook h6. So the rook helps in defense, covering. No checks square. anymore. <laughs> no checks anymore. White brings his uh, rook to. Um, to e3 and look now bishop c6 oh ouch mate threat very simple threat so both kings are in the uh, fire line and uh white has to be very careful if you would block the diagonal with a move like f3 to cover the um, threat of rook h1 then even the queen can come over to h8 with the idea of going rook h1 followed by queen h2 two pieces can enter on um on, on the on the h file it's black who has a devastating attack so this is very dangerous already instead and for that reason uh white thought let's move the king away uh, bring it to the center but it's a really sharp uh position here mm -hmm. and uh, giri uh, wanted to play it safe with a move knight d5 um offering the exchange of of queens which is a very human decision but it's not the kind of move to get the most out of your position. And okay. um, um, had he played queen takes d4... Uh, I didn't even see that. Because there's so many pieces around, you just don't even think I, that well, this is I, not I'm, a protected I'm pretty piece. Sure, I'm pretty sure he, he had seen this move. Yeah. But there was a clear reason he didn't want to go for it. And my thought is that after rook takes e6, the, the pawn is, is hanging. White is threatening to go rook e7 with check. And then you're uh, attacking... The pawn on g7 so there's a huge mating threat but the the, the hardest move to to find here is with your going back with your king to g8 i mean just a few moves ago we went voluntarily to f7 <laughs> now you're going back to get out of the check i mean e8 is very well covered so there's not uh -huh. a check there if you play rook e7 now to renew the mating threat looks as if white is really closed in delivering mate now the the key defensive counter-attack idea is to play knight g4, which first of all opens the path for the queen to defend the pawn on g7. But with this knight, you're attacking the rook 
And uh, if the rook goes away, you got to reckon also with uh, a mating threat on f2. Mm -hmm. If you go back to e2, for instance, then it's rook h1 with uh, with checkmate. As now the king can no longer escape to e2. So this is an unbelievable uh, counterattack. Yeah, this this could have happened, and then Anish would have just gone through to the uh, to the next round. Mm -hmm. But he played too passively. He wanted to control the game too much. He played knight e5. So white, um, white's rook is under threat and also the queen. Uh, there are no good checks. Rook g3 was uh, was played. Oh no, the queen swap. Queens are getting swapped. And objectively, okay, it's uh, it's okay for, uh, for black. Uh, but yeah. there are still pieces on the board and uh, there are still some hope. Black went for rook g8 to protect uh, pawn on g7. Bishop g6, okay. check, and uh, well, where's the king going? It can go to e7, it's one idea, but um, Anish went for king f6. Now Why? the bishop goes back to e4. Oh, okay. I thought like a check on e4, but probably this was the reason why the king went there to provoke the check or something. Yeah, pro probably it was a provocation because after this, the, the bishop doesn't have that many great squares to, to yeah. go to. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, still, it's it's a possibility, of, of course. So, well, bishop e4 played. I'm thinking that white was kind of uh, okay to play a position like knight takes c3, bishop takes c6, mm -hmm. b takes c6, b takes c3. It's not much, but black has only weak pawns. Um, and the rook on the fifth rank is able to uh, to target uh, these pawns together with the other rook, it's uh, it's still rel relatively a sharp uh, double rook end game. Um, Anish didn't play it. He uh, he went for knight e7. Once again, he is aiming for more exchanges without damaging his own uh, pawn structure. So he mm -hmm. keeps the queen side pawns intact. But now knight e4 check. That's your move. The the king uh -huh. got to got to keep the pawn defended. If you go king e7, pawn will be taken. It's game over. So the king. Has to go back to f7. Uh oh, there's a pawn win, right? No. Uh, uh what what did you want to play, Arne? Uh, uh, knight d6 and knight takes b7, but then the rook goes to b uh, a8. Right. Uh, b8, yeah. sorry, and then yeah, we have the same no, game all which sorts we had of, earlier. All, yeah, all sorts of ideas, even the pawn on yes, d4 thing as well. Okay. So Pardon. instead, instead, White is playing for an attack. He he went rook f3, king e7. And he doesn't want to take the pawn on b7 with a knight, but with his rook. Oof. Okay. Which is difficult to defend. Because um, the rook can't go away. It needs to keep the pawn on g7 defended. Oh. Uh-huh. So black played here, b5. Getting very interesting. With the idea that if you take the pawn, black doesn't recapture, but goes for knight takes d4. That's nice. Yeah. So that's a, that's a nice move. But now the knight is no longer defended and the rook makes one step back to c3, attacking that knight on uh, c6. And for instance, if black would take the pawn, this was not played in the game, there, um, there would follow rook c7 check. And if you go away with the king to attack that rook, now the rook comes in to, uh, to c5. Mm. So uh, this sets up a beautiful mating pattern. There's not much black can do. Black can give one check, but it doesn't change the uh, situation you just get out of the check if you connect the rooks it's rook c8 king e7 and rook c7 with a mating pattern as the knight covers both the d6 and f6 Beautiful. Uh, f6 burn. Uh, this is very very elegant and uh, well therefore the pawn was not taken instead rook h4 was played so that if <laughs> white takes the knight black captures the knight on e4 and the the game goes on but there followed a takes b5 Intending to uh -huh. take with uh, with a pawn, so a takes b5 recapture, and now f3. White really wants to maintain that knight on e4, as it's part of the uh, part of the attack to um, uh, to launch an attack against the king. Yes, knight takes d4 was uh -oh. played. Rook c7 is coming, and here it's the uh, it's the critical moment. This is very interesting, as there is only one good square for the king to to go to and let's see if you can uh, can find it okay so i don't think that king d8 is the good square because then the rook goes to a7 and i'm pretty sure this is 
trouble for black. Now, if king f8, well, we can give a check, goes up again. Uh, another check, hmm. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So what is the what is the difference? Maybe it is actually king d8 after all. Because king d8, yeah, yeah, very check. good, very good. It's it's king d8 indeed. Was not played huh. by Anish. If you play king d8, you can go for rook a7 with the idea to win the rook because it's unprotected. But black is gonna play uh, probably rook h8 to connect the rooks again. Uh, it's not a mate. What white really has to do now is to connect the rooks. So to renew this mating threat of uh, getting a rook to c8 and the other one to c7. Oh. But the defensive idea is to go rook e8 here. This is very difficult to, to see from <laughs> oh afar. And the idea is that after the check, you walk around with your king and the king is safe on f8 and black is able to hold this endgame. That is rough. That's very, very difficult indeed. Um, the other move, king e8, runs into knight f6 uh, check. And, so uh, simple. You you can't take it because yep. of rook takes g8. If you uh, if if you go away with the king, there is uh, rook d7, king c8, rook c5 check, oh. forcing the king to go away, and then at the end, you can take on um, on g8 the rook. The reason we give the check on c5 is that otherwise the king could have taken the, the rook on d7. Makes sense. Yeah. So let's see. In the game, there followed king f8. But now the knight comes into d6. Oh, that's mate. That's mate on f7. The rook can't really go uh, go anywhere. Otherwise, the pawn on uh, f7 will be hanging. Let's say if you go here, it's rook f7, king g8, and the other rook gives checkmate. Oh, how to defend? Too late. <laughs> the, only move, the, 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 the only move here is to, uh, to play rook f4 to cover the mating threat. Uh -huh. on, on f7 and then can you find a, a nice way to uh, eliminate the defender um hmm let's see no this is not working this is not working oh how to eliminate the defender that is interesting it's in one of your fritz trainers how you're doing how you're eliminating a lot yeah, of defenders. yeah very similar yeah <sighs> should have watched it again maybe um i i don't see that uh, i mean the only thing i can think of is uh, rook g4 but yeah very nice you you're hoping that if the rook is taken is rook f7 with mate sure but of course the rook can take with a check on f3 then yeah. the king goes to g2 king g2 and then the rook g goes good to f6, the only space. Well, let's say it goes there, yeah. Oh, and then we can just take a knight. Yeah, so that, that was not the only idea behind oh. <laughs> uh, behind rook g4. It's, it's a sort of an x-ray attack on uh, on the knight as well. So after rook takes f3, king g2, black is helpless. You, you can't do anything. Um, uh, knight is hanging. Uh, rook got to retain control over the f7 square. If you protect the knight, then you eliminate the defender once again, as Easy. after uh, e takes d4, king takes f3, and white is a piece up with a, with a mating attack, or probably you're winning even more material. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so that means after uh, king g2, oh. Anish uh, resigned, the match was uh, even again, and eventually Anish uh, lost uh, a very painful game in the, in the blitz portion, and uh, was eliminated, and that opened uh, the path for um, for Abbasov to uh, climb the uh, Olympus. Yeah, he uh, yeah. he just had an amazing uh, run, uh, eliminating top guys like uh, Peter Swidler, Salem. Um, I'm forgetting someone, I think. And uh, uh, he also eliminated Fidit in the in the quarterfinal. Yeah, and that helped him to uh, to reach the semifinal. And uh, that earned him a spot in the candidates tournament. So uh, he's the big sensation of the World Cup. And uh, you see that being the underdog can uh, sometimes also also uh, help you in order to uh, to have some successes. It can give you wings. That was really a cool game. Thank you for showing this to us, Robert. As always, I'm looking forward for to the next 
underdog and i hope you at home do the same thanks for watching we see each other soon again bye 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 bye, bye, -bye.